Jaya Shivarajaya here from vitalcoaching.com. The topic for this video is um, the different ways of relating or bonding or connecting within romantic relationships or romantic connections. Sometimes you're coupling with somebody, sometimes you just have a one night stand, sometimes you will be lovers for an extended period of, a period of time. If you are within the tantric field and, the, and practicing tantric sex, you might be tantric lovers, which is like embodying a certain, a certain way of relating with that person. Uh, sometimes you are going to marry that person, sometimes you are going to be divorced with that person and uh, still keep on evolving as in a co-parenting way. Um, sometimes you are going to meet somebody and establish a deep, profound uh, degree of energetic intimacy with somebody without necessarily going on a date with that person. Sometimes you are going to go on a date, but then don't have intimacy with that person. Sometimes you are going to have intimacy, but not intercourse. And sometimes you are going to have intercourse and it's just going to be a one-time thing. And uh, sometimes you are going to meet that person, have intercourse, realize that you are really a good match and become lovers. And then these being lovers might evolve into a committed relationship, into a coupling experience, eventually into marriage and into a long, lifelong partnership. So those different degrees of attraction or different ways of relating, it's very important to have them in your mind because sometimes you meet somebody and you're trying to force um, or inspire just a lover's experience when in fact you have the potential to really become a couple, enter into a coupling experience. Or sometimes you might be projecting something which is like, I want to couple with that person, but there isn't the deep resonance or the potential to create that kind of coupling experience on the long term. For whatever reason, it might be incompatibility in the character, lifestyle choices, different uh, places where you might live. You know, if you are um, living in, uh, in Japan and your, your, your potential partner is in, in New York and you cannot find ways of coming together on the same roof or in the same location, it's going to be challenging to, to create a relationship. And then there is something else that uh, I discovered recently that I call uh, Dharma partners. Dharma means that you have a destiny line which is aligned with uh, somebody else and that person becomes some form of energetic or soulmate partner within that field and you can have that with more than one person. I have quite a few people in my life with who I'm not, you know, in, in the case of women, with who I'm not engaging in a coupling experience. We are not necessarily active lovers, but there is an alignment in the Dharma or in our destiny lines. It means that that person is going to play a significant role in my own evolution and be a kind of mirror to reflect to me the pathway in which we synchronize. So our pathways might be synchronized. And this is what I call Dharma partners. So if you don't have these different ideas in mind, very often what happens in, uh, in the traditional romantic relationships is that you are going to meet somebody and you feel attracted to that person and then you um, instantly create the romantic dream. It means that the projections that are going to come into your field are going to be telling you that you are supposed to be marrying that person. That suddenly this is it, you, are, you have to couple. And why? Because it's the conditioning that in a way forces almost that vision into your field. But very often that's not what is supposed to be happening. This is not necessarily the highest possible frequency and expression of what is supposed to be happening there. And so it's important to have those different models in mind. Sometimes you are going to have a much more fulfilling connection with another human being within the context of being lovers rather than trying to force a coupling experience. And so if you can consciously design these spaces instead of being like, oh, suddenly there is the prioritizing, the demands, the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the commitment, there is all these qualities that represent the coupling experience. If you don't force that vehicle on, on two partners who are supposed just to be dharma or just lovers, then if you don't force that experience, it's going to allow a certain freedom and space of movement that actually allows that connection to be, uh, to be fulfilled. 
And so what I invite you to do right now is check in your field. Do you recognize somebody that plays a very important role? Like precisely, you know, a soul brother or a soul sister or a dharma partner or somebody who has been a lover but with who you are not coupling and who still represents a very important aspect in your own evolution. What are the qualities that this person, uh, these persons, this these beings bring into your life that are going to enhance your experience and so you know what I want you to to explore the possibility is that there are lots of ways of relating okay an exclusive coupling experience is just one of the possible models but you know because of our conditioning and because of pop culture because of the way we are geared in society very often that's the first model and it's the only one that we have in mind when in fact you go like all these other models and possible ways of relating have depth, they have reality, they are powerful, and they, they, they have the potential to massively expand your field. Some of my deepest connections with women in my field haven't been within a coupling experience. They have been within the, the model of Dharma, partners, and right now I have a few of them around the world, women that I would qualify or that I would call Dharma partners. It means that they have a reflection. We share sometimes, you know, there might be a certain degree of energetic, emotional or sensual or even sexual intimacy to a certain point. But we are not coupling. And so does that mean that that experience has no value? Of course not. Of course it has value. But we have to look beyond the model of just like, here is a man, here is a woman, they meet, they become a couple, they get married, they make babies. You know, that's only one of the possible things. And um, the, it's, it's important to start, you know, opening our eyes and perceive the fact, the possibility of other ways of relating. And um, every person, each one of you who is watching this video, you are aware of that. You are aware of sometimes that at some point in your life somebody came into your field and you didn't couple with that person, but that person had a significant impact in your field. And you might be like creating skills, right? You go like, or creating a hierarchy of depth and intimacy. And you go like, wow, unless you, you really commit to yourself with somebody, you commit yourself to somebody, that is not going to be a real intimacy or it's not real love. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's like, absolutely not. In my experience, you can have very profound degrees of intimacy without being a couple and without commitment, without sexual exclusiveness, for instance. Have you ever experienced that? Personally, I did. And you might be like, okay, well, that's not real love. You know, you can define or you can judge that. But from my experience, some of the deepest possible expressions of love and connection happen within a space that was not coupling. And sometimes there isn't even intimacy. It might be somebody, you know, one of the women who, who impacted my life the most was an 80-year-old woman, woman that I met for, an ex for a period of time that lasted for about an hour. I never saw her again. She came into my field gave me wisdom, gave me something that was powerful, became an agent of my own evolution, a guru, a teacher, a dharma partner, I don't know what to call it, but the thing is that she came into my field and years, 20 years later, I still remember every aspect of our conversation, the depth of what happened there, and the initiation that was transmitted to me through that vehicle. And so it happens, you know, it happens. Uh, and uh, it's powerful and it's important to figure out, you know, or to, to identify in which model you are, in which way of relating you are, because sometimes you might be in an experience with somebody that is not within your destiny to create a couple with. And you might be forcing the couple experience. You might be forcing something that is, that is um, you know, or you feel naturally inspired to go in that direction when in fact there is another dance, there is another model, another way of relating that might be a, met, a better match for the two of you. 
So check in your field, observe what's happening, observe the navigation of, of these emotions and this field and, uh, and realize simply that this freedom is there. You have lots of ways of relating and, uh, you know, if it's not for you, you know, if the idea of Dharma partner is not a match, you go like, no, there is only one way for me as a woman to relate to a man and it's going to be within a coupling experience. I'm not interested in any form of energetic, emotional or sexual intimacy with anybody unless we are coupled, you know, that's your, that's your truth. It's perfect if this is what you feel. But if you feel like conflicting internally, and you go like, wow, you know, I just went on a couple of dates with this guy and we're not going to be lovers, but he's going to be a significant person in my life. And we don't feel sexual attraction. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you go like, wow, it's, isn't it in interesting that we never kissed? And we're like, yeah, why? Because the spirit that is creating that connection is not inspiring or is not calling for sexual intimacy. It's saying you are bonding or you're connecting or you're sharing on a certain degree or a certain space that has nothing to do with um, sexual intimacy. For instance, so post in the comments, tell me about your experiences. Are there any significant beings in your life with who you have been trying to couple, for instance, and then you realize that mm -mm, that's not a coupling experience that we were looking for. Or a situation where you thought it was not a coupling experience, that it becomes a coupling experience, that you underestimated the power of uh, what you had to share. Or, um, yes, yeah, somebody else coming into your field in any other of these models and having a significant impact in your life on the long term. I'm really curious about your experience. Again, this is an open conversation, open discussion. What I'm sharing here is the result of my own life experiences, uh, sharing with, um, you know, what my clients have been bringing, the result of all this discussion in different forums or over here on Facebook, witnessing people's lives and realizing <laughs> there are lots of ways of relating. And uh, the coupling experience is only one of them. I love you.